Hey, how's it going everyone? Sixty from Manavaro here, bringing you another quality tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create something like this using CS5's new feature, Puppet Wrap. Now, usually if you were to create a complex smoke image like this, you'll need a series of uh, different smoke images and uh, most of them would be prepared to look like what you're trying to achieve. But with CS5's new feature, you'll just need one stock and that's it. So to get started, you'll need various stocks from a bunch of sites, which I've listed in my site at anavara.net. Should you need them, go on to www.anavara.net. To get started, we're going to just open up the smoke image. All right, just copy this image, create a new document, import clipboard, command V to paste. For the purpose of the tutorial, we're going to work on a lower resolution just to make everything faster. So I'm going to just resize my dimensions down to one. I'm going to just use the magic wand and um, pressing shift to shift and click to just select the background. Command shift I, invert the selection, and press command J on the layer to get a cutout. I'm just going to hide these layers. I'm going to invert my background black and I'm going to desaturate the smoke. I'm going to level it and I'm just going to make it more contrasty. Alright, if there's any rough edges, feel free to just um, go in there and with the eraser, soft brush, and just make it smoother in general. Now let's use the new CS5 function, the puppet wrap, to just, we're going to make it more pointy on the sides. So just plot in four corners like this, and start dragging the corner to make it more of a pointier smoke, so that it goes along with the flow better, like so. Once you have this, it's time to get in our unicorn image. Just paste that in. Now let's desaturate and turn the opacity to around 50%. Command shift U to desaturate. And just make sure it's on the top of the layers. Now let's just hide the smoke cut out to use it as a backup and press command J to get a duplicate of it. Now let's play with the smoke to make it to make the body of the unicorn. So we're just going to rotate it so it's in a nice angle. To done that, going to hover wrap again. This time, this plot points like this. So for this top bit, I'm going to use it as its head. Try and form the overall shape of the body, like so. If some some parts are like too much, you just click near the edge and just um, drag it inward a bit. Make sure it doesn't get on his tail, because we're not going to do the tail just yet. Define his head properly. And I'm um, uh, pretty satisfied with this. So I'm going to hit Command Enter and we we'll have our first bit. Now let's Command J on our backup and I'm going to start creating some of his legs. I'm scale it down a bit, put it in a nice position ready to be wrapped, and then go into Edit, Pop the Wrap. Give it points along his leg. And it looks fine, it doesn't have to be exact. Just use your gut feeling on this. And next leg, let's drag that in. Now for the tail and the horns. For a horn, you can um, actually try just skewing it instead. So to do that, you're just going to like make it vertical, and then you can um, just skew it. Say for example, you can just press Command and drag the corners so that it's like this. Then you can just rotate it to form its horns, like so. And um, if there's any extra parts, you just delete it. Now for the last bit, it's tails. We're just going to do the same thing, duplicate our backup scale it down. This tail is a bit complex, it's a um, kind of swirly kind of thing, so you're just gonna have to plot more points. So like maybe four will suffice. Yep, that'll do. And rotate it into a nice position. Now let's have a look without the image getting in the way. Yeah it's not too bad, I would say um, still need to tweak it up a bit, say like maybe make this horn bigger like so. A little bit too heavy on the tail, and so maybe you can just uh, go in there and erase a few parts on the tail to make it look more pointy. Okay, so I still think the head needs a bit more detail, so we'll just turn on our template image. Gonna try and make the head have more of a detail. Gonna just rotate it in a nice position, put the layer on top. I'm just gonna actually just gonna skew it, just skew this layer to distort it. I'm actually, just going to go in there and create a pointy smoke effect coming out of him like this. I think that's a nice detail for a horse. And um, for the eyes I'm going to just get a backup of the smoke and I'm going to just use that for the eyes. 
So scale it right down, put it there like so. Rotate it to the angle of his eyes, like that. Just play around with the sides. And just delete a few parts that's going that's going too far further in the distance. I think you can I can um, duplicate the eyes a bit so that it gives it a bit more punch to it. Yeah, just keep playing with it until the composition is good. Maybe on the horn just put it on the very top and turn it into screen and then delete a few parts that's going into the background to make it more consistent. Now once everything's done and dusted, we're going to just create a new gradient on top of everything using spectrum gradients it's in the default gradients and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to just uh, drag this gradient from left from right to left or wherever put that on color I'm going to just move it around to get a nice little cavity for it maybe it's not like this it's nice yeah just play around with it even you can rotate it yeah I think this looks good now okay it's time to add a few sparkles and special effects to our image going to need a new layer on top going to your brushes open up the assorted brushes and there are several nice ones that we can use to just add a few nice looking sparks to our image the first one is one of these um, crosses. You're going to go into your brush window, go into shape dy dynamics, uh, make the size jitter on 100, go into shape, tip shape, put the spacing right up, go into scatter, turn the scatter up as well. Now once that's done, leave the brush palette open because we need it later. On the new layer, I'm just going to brush some white wherever. Now I'm going to make sure not to go too overboard with this, just a few is fine. If some gets too pic pixelated, I'm going to just use the blur tool to blur it up so it looks like just uh, blurry instead of being um, low quality. Now you might as well drag that under the spectrum layer. And um, the next one we can use is the um, double ring brush like this. This is a nice lighting effect as well that you can try. But you got to keep it to a minimum so don't don't um, go overboard. And the next one is just using a round soft brush to just create some sparkles. I'm going to put the spacing right up remember. I'm going to go crazy with the sparkles here. Now erase a few parts to so just turn down any parts that maybe looking to overboard. For the sparks I'm going to actually just make it flow along with our image. So we're going to need a flow direction in, in which case I'm going to just um, and that will be our flow direction like this. Once we have that we can start painting small dots close to the flow. If the gradient needs to be bigger, scale it up. Now to finish off I'm just going to paste in the nebula image. I'm going to scale it to a nice position and we're going to Command L to level it and just drag it, drag the white output level to the left and you get something like this. Let's get a new merged layer of everything. For the last finishing touches I'm going to get a merged layer of everything, paste it in on top and I'm going to go to filter, blur, lens blur. Use values of these, create a new layer mask on top of it, invert the layer mask and start brushing white on areas that can be a bit blurry such as the legs and some of the stars you don't want all the stars to be very bright and sharp just, just put some on the smoke and it'll give it a nice kind of glowish kind of thing and we're just going to duplicate this blurred out thing we're going to delete the layer mask we're going to turn this into lighten and i'm going to turn the opacity way down now i'm going to crop the image so it's like wider and I'm going to put two bars so it's like a cinematic effect it's just highly optional but I like this effect so just use a rectangular mark read, drag and fill that in black duplicate it from the bottom and you get a nice cinematic effect happening to finish off I'm going to sharpen everything so I'm going to copy merge everything going to filter other high pass value of 3 and just turn that to soft light and you're done have a look isn't that just awesome so i uh, hope you have enjoyed the tutorial hope you've learned something and uh see you all around 60 from another signing out peace out boy <laughs>